Good evening and welcome to the July 19th uh, Town Board Work Session. Will the clerk please call this, um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Can we do, please call the roll? Draw. Here. Cole. Here. Uh, Lee. Here. Ackenden. Here. All here. Okay, thank you. Um, you have before you the appro board, you have the approval of minutes of J June 21st. So Can moved. I make a motion? So moved. I'll Mo second. Moved by um, Cole, second by Lee. Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. All aye. Monthly reports are in. Um, there's a couple that are, we're still waiting for. Um, thank you. Who's early with them? Uh, next on the agenda is our guests, and I'm going to turn this over um, to um, Ms. Ivers. Oh, no, I, I think I will turn this. Ms. Ivers, first on the agenda here is the Community Victory Garden update. I should say I will turn this over to Sabrina Renner um, to give us a little update here on our Community Victory Garden. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Thank really you. here for moral support. Larry is gonna do the talking. Perfect. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Welcome. I'm the new committee chair for this year. You so are. Congratulations. This is, Congratulations. This is my first year as committee chair. Welcome. <clears throat> so I just have a few things mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll just open it up, you know, if there's any questions. So the Penfield Community Garden, you know, if anybody's unfamiliar, operates in the on Penfield property. Can you just um, speak a little closer or move that microphone a little? Thank you. So we can How's that you. better? Yes. And it uh, gives a, a residents a place to grow their own flowers and herbs in an organic uh, environment for their own consumption or for family. And we also donate um, extras to the Penfield Ecumenical Food Shelf. <coughs> There are um, 85 whole beds, and because of demand, we've split a few in half to, so that we can accommodate more. There's usually a waiting list to get in, so there's 12 half-size beds for people who want less of a, you know, responsibility, I suppose. And um, I guess I have, we've had a few issues with our infrastructure as far as the water supply with the new expansion we had for the community uh, children's garden. Um, we need to extend the water, you know, back there to make that easier. And we had a little issue last year with the uh, hookup to the uh, fire hydrant got stolen towards the end of the year. So we were on the hook for that one a little bit, but <clears throat> we're trying to restrain it with some chains, but if somebody wants to steal it, they're just gonna go up and unscrew it and walk away with it. Really need a better solution. Is there? I was going to say maybe we should discuss that sometime. A bit off a line. It's expensive. Those okay. water meters. Yep. Yeah, that was that was a big hit. Maybe that's something we should. So again, the community about. garden supports the, our community we, uh, by sharing knowledge. Uh, we usually conduct seed starting classes, new gardener orienteering or orientation, and some other things throughout the year. Uh, we supported and also did a plant sale that benefited both us and uh, some other local organizations. We did the 4th of July parade this year, like we usually do every year. We're planning another pumpkin walk in the fall. It was very successful and popular last year, so we're gonna keep doing that. Um, like I said, we have partnered with other local gardening groups and the Rotary. Uh, where we can to mm -hmm. benefit everyone. And of course our extra produce goes to the ecumenical food shelf. Um, the garden provides almost a yearly opportunity for Eagle, uh, Eagle Scout projects for Boy Scouts. Um, that helps the garden improve you know, while also promoting ethical leadership and development for our youth. <laughs> with what usually ends up being, since we can provide the financing, uh, organize and do opportunity for the scout to, uh, you know, learn leadership with, so very positive there. Our uh, latest one this year was with the, the scout, along with our grant money, did the children's garden, which was on the news and, yes. of course, on the, the, our town website and whatnot. So the children's gardens help teaching kids where food comes from, healthy eating, and caring for the environment. <coughs> Improvement projects that we typically go through in a year, which you know ticks up our time and um, money, 
is replace, replacing, you know, weathered wood for stuff that's getting old, like the raised beds or sheds or whatever. Um, we're in the process of trying to improve the signage for use of the composting uh, areas and, um, you know, use and maintenance of uh, rain barrels and rain collection that we use at the garden. Uh, one of our projects, maybe not related to anything, but uh, we grow peppers and send them into the small X pepper project. And in return, they can send us hot sauce for our members to use or money if wow. we need money for projects that we're doing. Yeah. It's a very positive program. Everybody loves uh, participating. <laughs> and then, you know, the, as a general rule, everything is uh, environmentally responsible as possible. We operate as an organic garden. We're trying to use some non or uh, non chemical weed control for our fence lines and stuff because it's all deer fence to mm -hmm. keep the animals from sharing <laughs> in our uh, in our work. Mm -hmm. um, the, we've switched completely now, or almost completely. The rototiller isn't, but the weed whacking, uh, trimming, blowing, and lawn mowing now is all electric. Great. <coughs> we have solar panels on our storage shed that uh, provide the power for all the batteries for the electric, and that's been working, you know, wonderful. And uh, communications and sharing, we uh, have a monthly newsletter that uh, this past month we sent out things for our members that talked about invasive species, uh, poison ivy, and soil pH. So is it, that's pretty much all I had, you know, put together. Are there any questions that you might have about the, the garden? No, sounds good. I was just over there the other day and I thought I love the new, the containers, the new ones you're doing sitting in the children's garden. I think yeah. those are a great asset. I just wanted to see how well they were doing, but you're growing some, there's some vegetables in there coming in. Yeah, yeah. There, there have been uh, yep. at least three classes in there now with kids. So it's wonderful. Been hard at work. Our new Penfields of future farmers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. So, we thank you, thank you very much for your work and and continuing and a nice uh, service to all the for the residents. I know there's a waiting list for the beds, so hopefully, yeah, yeah. Um, there are 85 beds. Is there? Yeah, uh, 85 full beds and 12 half beds, and they're full with the waiting list. So, wow, it's a popular, very much place so. To be. I know other towns have uh, used our our uh, example of our yeah. garden to start their own, so I think that's a, a good tribute to us. We started having our committee meetings at the uh, pavilion that uh, a couple of years ago, our scout project was to put up a pavilion. Yep. We realized that the sun gets pretty bright under that at the end of the day, so we just added more drop-down shade stuff Great. for it. It's a nice place to have, have our little meeting. I know, I know, I see you guys out there a lot, thanks, yeah. Thank you very much for coming, appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice, You're happy welcome. gardening. <laughs> Thank you. Next on our agenda is, I'll turn this over to Ms. Ivers, is I think we have some guests. Yes, we do. Um, we'll give a, a moment for the changing of the guards. Sure. Um, you'll recall that we've um, had uh, Jordan and Max, who are the owners of 1788, 1790, and 1794 in before, and certainly, gentlemen, you can make your way up to the front if you'd like. Yeah. Um, in to, to, to discuss a potential um, idea they had for redevelopment of their property. Um, sure. They came to the town board. The town board provided some thoughts and feedback. Um, the group went back to the drawing board, if you will, with a revised uh, site sketch. And they came through and, and chatted with the, the project review committee. That's the staff committee that looks at proposed development. And so we've seen the site sketch, and then since then, they've uh, worked with their um, architect to develop some renderings to give the board an idea of the direction they're heading in before they make um, formal application. So this is not a formal application, this is just sort of an, an, an informal discussion and review. So I'll first bring up the site plan that's uh, been recently submitted, um, and I'll pull that up and bring it onto screen so everyone can see it. Perfect. Thank you. So you'll see, and just for orientation purposes, because anytime you're looking at an aerial, you have no idea where you are, over here on the right where the cursor is, that's Penfield Road. Um, this building right here is gonna be remaining unchanged. This is the sort of the former church looking building. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure who the, what the, who the occupants are in the building, if I'm so sorry to say that out loud. 
dental office. The Thank, you. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yep. you. Um, and then this is uh, the the building that would be maintained or, or kept. This is the uh, 1990. Um, uh, it's a, we, it was determined that it's a historic building. It dates back to the 1800s or early 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, and there's certainly some history there um, that would the town would really appreciate being able to, to retain and, and celebrate. And so this is a newly proposed building, um, but and it's bringing that building a little bit closer to the road. Um, they've changed the orientation of this back building mm -hmm. so that it retains a um, couple, does a couple of things. It creates a little bit of a better flow between the adjacent properties um, next door. Um, it creates a centralized parking between the buildings. Um, it also orients this back building so that it's providing an, a buffer to the neighboring street or properties that are um, on on Liberty, mm -hmm. and it um, provides more parking, um, but less potential impact with respect to headlights and yep. cars turning around. Um, so that's the updated um, site plan. And I'm gonna also then just bring up the renderings, and then I'm gonna stop talking. This is the part where, up to this point, where I can speak and know the, the past, and I'll bring up the next image, which is the proposed elevation, and I do apologize. They, did try sending an updated version of this, and I only have this one available at the ready. Um, I can certainly update the town board if this has been modified. That is the updated one. That is the updated one. Okay, yeah. wonderful. So at this point, I would have the applicant maybe introduce their guest and <laughs> go from there. So Jordan Morgenstern, Max Eberts again. Yes. Um, hey. And then this Welcome. is Dave Hanlon, our architect, okay. who's been sort of helping us through and coaching us through the, pro you know, the, the project. Sure. So we've, we've shared the feedback, and Linda, you are absolutely correct about the historic nature of the building. <laughs> um, so we're not touching that building at all. We're leaving it the, the way it is. Yes. Um, but we've, we've shared the feedback that you guys had, mm -hmm. you guys shared, and the staff shared in, in both meetings we had with, with, with them. Mm -hmm. We shared it with Dave, and this is sort of our, our next iteration um, of where we'd like to go. Okay, so and I think what I'd like to do is pull up the other, they do have another um, view and this sort of gives you a sense of what Penfield Road would look like because on this uh, on this rendering yep. the lower one is the one that would front on Penfield Road okay the other building other, the other building down. on the top would be on the way in the back in the yeah. back but you weren't clear on that picture before mm -hmm. that that one building that's sort of hidden by trees now yes is the one that comes down to correct make room for yep Yes. So and let me that's not historic. That's not historic. No. Yeah, I think we confirmed that was what, 60, 70, somewhere in there. Maybe yes. as a build time for that. Yeah. There you go. That's that's better. That's so perfect. Yeah. So this so. is uh, the rendering that sort of sh this is existing building, mm -hmm. existing building, proposed building. So we've added the decks on, our, on the, that was the initial version uh -huh. on the left, the proposed yeah. 12 year building, but we've added decks and different features to. For the street, for the street side, or for Correct. the, from the street side. The street has that, so. yeah. yeah. That porch, I think. Yeah, yeah, if you go back to the other rendering, yeah, it shows right the there. porch. Right. Mm -hmm. So, as an architect, you were looking to make it more of a historical look. I see. That's uh, yes. Yeah. And I don't know if it's helpful. I know you've got on the screen that mm -hmm. you're looking at here. I've got hard copies too. That's oh, that's, that's it's fine. Looking here. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I would love a hard copy of that. If yeah. we don't have that in the drive, right? We have. A, it I, was just added to the drive. Oh, um, okay. But. It's Thanks. always take it. Thank okay. you. Uh, Thank you. No, so. I went to the trouble yeah. of printing. You might as well enjoy the benefit. Here, I'll, yeah. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. No, no, no. It's we right. can share. Can share. Yeah. So the uh, this is easy. yeah, as, as Jordan mentioned, the larger rendering shows. Oh, we're gonna need a mic. So oh, a microphone. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> wow, he's rushing to get to the other mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, so on that on this view, you can see the two two and a half story building that paces Penfield Road. That didn't catch the updated porch that we've added to the roadside that shows on the other view. Mm -hmm. So of course we'd wanted to make it look, you know, as uh, traditional uh, the quality that you would expect on Main Street and, or uh, Penfield Road and you know in the mm -hmm. village in the town. Um, and it's it's meant to be, you know, fairly simple in design but enough character to it that it feels like it fits in well. Um, and it, in fact, we've kept it to a two-story facade on the Penfield Road side. It grows to two, uh, three stories on the parking lot side. Uh, we actually reduced some units in that building to get it down to what you see there. Mm 
-hmm. So yeah, if you want to, why don't we just go to the large, yeah, large elevations. So, you know, that the character you can see there trying to create something that's very traditional, late 1800s look, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, shingle, uh, wood trim, some metal, metal roof over the porch, uh, elements like that that create, you know, a, a nice character to it. And then the building in the back, uh, although it's three stories, you know, we've been successful at doing uh, three-story buildings, but have it appear to be a two and a half story building. So the, the upper floor, the units are tucked into the eaves um, so it has the character of a two and a half story or you know, two story plus attic look to it. So that's um, the character that we're trying to you mm -hmm. know, provide for the site. And as you described on the site, you know, we've reflected all the comments that we've received to date and be happy to answer any questions. All right, forward questions. Well, so how many, uh, how many, I mean, you just said it and I missed it, but how many uh, apartments for the back? So if you go, yeah, on the site plan, you'll see the front building has 12 units. Right. There's five per floor, first, second, then two on the third. Uh, so, and then on the back building, there's 35 units. And, and these are for like, uh, uh, not for families, or are they for families too? They'd be? probably be a mix of one and two bedroom units, and that's typically, yeah. you know, uh, couples, single, single people, yep. some empty nesters. It's a, usually you get a wide range, a wide mix in a site like this. You'd think there'd be empty nesters and you end up with, you know, young professionals, right. but, uh, and, and vice versa. So it's, it'll be a mix. And there, there's no garages or overhangs. Everything is out, outside parking. Yeah, but just surface parking, no interior parking. What's a dedicated parking though? Because people park back there to go to other places and so on. And there's that, there's that, um, what is down there right now? It's been many things. It was um, oh, a landscaper, and then it was a salon. Yeah, there was a salon. There's back that outbuilding there. mm -hmm. back there too, yeah. and they need parking, well, right? I think uh, each of those tenants has their own parking they do. as well. Yes. Yeah. There's, so, there's that parking lot continues towards um, Liberty Liberty Street. So this is a, your in your proposed parking is it's a total of 74 units. 74 parking spots. 74 parking, I'm, I'm sorry, parking spots, I meant 74. Is it slightly more than that? No, 74 is yep. within that demised area. Yep. You know. okay. But if you have two adults, they have two cars. Mm -hmm. You know, usually the ratio yep. that's used on uh, projects like this that have a mix of the ones and two bedrooms that are uh, being proposed, the ratio is typically 1.25. That's the national standard for apartments that's been successful because there's, you know, a diversity of use. Um, mm -hmm. Some people have one, some have two. It's just the number of people that are on site at any given time. Time. And where's our road, our access road? Is that in between all that uh, parking? And right there. It's that right here, yeah. But it goes down get, uh, Liberty, from Liberty it, to Liberty. It's very similar. That, that weighs out almost identically to the way it is right now. So it, right now, it would just be uh, taking a swath of the parking out or something? Or well, right now that's basically just grassy, vacant land yeah, that isn't some used of it, for anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think that, that where the building is essentially yes. is vacant land if you get an aerial of it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we've added, what we've done here is there are about six spots or eight spots in front of the back building that mm -hmm. I moved out just so we have some green area in front of the building. And then there's added parking uh, where the number 21 is that's an added section of parking, just so that we end up with the same number of parking before and after. And if need be, you know, we can tweak this to provide yeah. even a few more spots. So the parking spots that are up close to the building are the handicap probably, and, and yeah, mostly typically, those yes. for the residents? Yep, you yep. see the hatched spots. Yep, that hatching is a handicap tile. Is that parking is a far top of the, um, the drawing, the rendering, is that the parking lot that's next to like the little plaza with uh, the barbershop and salon and hung wah and all that? Is that? No, that that's, that's not on that, okay. that it wasn't that's on that not, rendering at all. Okay, yeah. because that's. That has, it's its own parking. Yeah. They would, like they, they don't yeah. use our area. Okay. Our area could be used by the tenants between us and the Liberties that's generally. A, this is a good example of seeing okay. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can see those four rows of parking are mm -hmm. maintained on the new site plan. And what's been added is that uh, extension of the parking up onto the right-hand side. 
the and back we, area. And then you'd be finishing that road all the way, the access road all the way to the connection to right. Liberty to Liberty. Yep. To Liberty. That'd be great. I mean, the idea yep. really is connecting it and making yes. it all, like, it, it fits together. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and as part of this plan, there'd be that um, a formal connection and roadway from right. uh, this their, their parcel here um, to this parcel. And that's been a connection that's been a long desired improvement, I would say, by the town. Yes. And then you will be, well, you would be uh, plowing it and so forth. That's all your, you right. guys, and our, right? Right, on our property. Yeah, yeah. on your property, <laughs> yeah, through to the, yep. I just wanted to make clear. But it's still an access road yeah. for the public, so. I mean, it, it, sure. They need, like, I think that, our tenants, our users, will use that road to, you know, to leave or see businesses and, and head. I think they'll come out, sure, they'll come right. out that back on Liberty because it's a lot easier. I think there's like, there'll yeah. be three access points that they'll, they'll regularly use. Mm -hmm. yep. and I was just over there too, and I, would, I used two different access points yeah. on my way in and my way out. But if you're at the roofer or if you're at the restaurant, you know, you might go down that access road to get out on the other end of Liberty to hit five mile line versus getting. Right. You know, making a left right. out. Yeah, it's, a, it's difficult so there, there making will a be left. people other than your tenants mm -hmm. using it. I would, yeah, I would expect that. As you look at the, um, the drawing and we're, and we're looking at the magnet, right, the one-story uh, restaurant now. Yep. As you look to the left of that, on this drawing it's showing that's new grass, I assume, right? New green space, is that what that's depicting? Yeah, we, just, we cleaned it up, that could be parking, but that's. Okay, so that, that was giving me my next question was, is there, if need be, could that still retain some parking, maybe specific to the magnet, or, you know, um, I, I'm not sure when their peak hours are, and um, just want yeah, to be yeah, sure. Yeah, we, we have no problem reducing the green space. We just think I, it I, gives it more of a park-like, yeah. yep. no, like we're all community for, feel yeah. that yeah, makes it like people want to be there and walk around. And we agree, we're all for the green, the yeah. greenness, but um, just want to make sure that everybody's got enough parking when push yeah. comes to shove, that's, yeah. that's the only thing. And how about the buffer then uh, to the rear of the, um, the new building in the back? How so much yeah. of that buffer is being disturbed by? Well, I think just about zero of it. It's pretty wild how significant that buffer is. Mm -hmm. The neighboring parcel behind us is like overgrown and sort of like a little bit out of control perhaps. But like there's tons of trees, really tall like trees that are way bigger than the building we're, we're mm -hmm. proposing. Um, you really can't see anything through it today. Mm -hmm. It has a fence already, like a stockade wood fence. It's yeah. already there. Um, I can't imagine they'd be interrupted at all, okay. the neighbors behind, just because there's so much density and in the, greenery. And the retention pond, Mark, is right behind. To where, the left a little bit, to, yeah. Where is that again, right? I think it's sort of where it says, so, yeah. Yep. They would have to do some potentially underground storage, so um, they would ultimately discharge into the, either the creek, kind of off the back left mm -hmm. corner as we look at it here, or into that pond. Um, they would have to do underground storage to mitigate their additional impervious surface areas and everything else and then discharge into that. Okay. No, and I think the, the theme that you've presented is consistent with uh, the little plaza. Um, mm -hmm. where, um, Very much, uh, yeah. Hung wise, yeah. you it's know, the name. parking's not behind the building. It's to not impact the people on Liberty Street. It's on the sides. I think that's consistent here with what you're proposing. So I think that's, that's probably a good thing, so. So can I ask you a question? I assume you've probably maybe done some studies. You know that there's an interest in people that once you put these apartments in, they want to, they gravitate to coming to I think that everyone's here? excited about new development. We haven't done any formal studies. I just, okay. We've just heard the need and we've seen other other right. projects, you know, yep, succeed sure. all over the place. I think people generally want modern new housing stock um, that doesn't require maintenance <coughs> and just makes life sort of yeah. simpler. And I do know there's a quite a few apartments right around that area and they there is no vacancies. I right. mean, they're usually, um, there's a, a need and they, so. Do you guys, um, not knowing much about your, your business, but do you guys have other uh, properties, anything similar in nature to well, what we've got a couple other similar projects under development now right. in the city of Rochester. You do? Okay. Um, but this would be the first from scratch, you know, this new development similar to this in the suburbs. Nice. Is there anything similar to this as far as that we can look at as far as what a uh, building looks like similar um, to this? Well, we're working on one that's identical, you know, the Carnegie on, on Goodman. I have. But we're doing a mirror to the Carnegie on the parcel right next door to it okay. that, that's under development, you know, it's under development now. Okay. 
Interesting. Like a, you know, yeah. a, a high-end product that, sure. that I think that people there's desire for. Sure. Uh, right now, we're um, working on a project on School Street and Victor, that's similar to that. It's a three-story. Um, that I thought I saw that your name's on that, right? Yeah. I saw that when I wrote my I ride on the canal, so I went right by there the other day. It's a nice building. Yeah, and it's you know similar demand, you know, for in in town, in village. Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. People love to be close in. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So for this point, I think if you had any other comments, otherwise the next step for um, these folks would be to come and make formal application for conditional use permit and site plan. Um, and if, mm -hmm. if this would be the time to say speak now or forever, you know, this if you don't want them to make that application now would be a good time to let them know. We'd like no, I, I think it's vastly improved to what the last time I was, you know, concerned like because you want the historic look. You don't want to lose the character mm -hmm. and uh, the building that you know we spoke about. That was, um, you know, yeah. We heard your we heard your feedback. We heard the staff feedback, and we yeah. that. we're happy to no, yeah, make sorry. modifications that right. yeah, satisfy sorry. you. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Yeah, great. What is so? If, just to talk through the approval process, um, we come back to town board with the application? Yeah, so full application, site plan, documentation, um, letter of intent, and I certainly can talk to you all yeah. of this do offline. You, do you mind okay. taking offline. that conversation? Offline. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, happy, happy to talk offline and, yeah. and walk you through that. Cool. Okay. Thank you. And, and thank you guys very much for, yeah, for coming. Have a great night. We'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Okay, thanks. All right, we have next on the agenda, um, Carrie, I believe we have another yes, guest. Yes, the next guests are mine as well. Um, we've got um, uh, Jeff DeFranco and his uh, son Nick, Nicholas, I'm not sure I don't wanna shorten or make him sound like he's in trouble, um, are here. Um, they're prospectively looking at purchasing or in their contract to purchase 1861 um, Penfield Road. They wanted to come in and chat with the town board um, before they even put pen to paper, a very early conversation to talk about their idea um, so that they can get some input in, and feedback from the board before they uh, come back with some concept or even a, a full application. So um, I did provide uh, the GIS map um, so we, everybody knows where we are and what we're talking about and I'll just pull that up right now for convenience. So the parcel that is highlighted sort of in, in blue here mm -hmm. is uh, an empty vacant lot um, and it's bounded on either side um, by uh, two existing buildings. And I'll bring up a street view as well in case that's helpful. And with that I would, um, the, they're looking at proposing two, two structures um, on the property. One that would be sort of in keeping or in line with the existing building building line up on Penfield Road. Um, the plan would be to, to construct a, a, a building that would house a bakery um, for a family operation that they have. And then the, the on the rear portion, they're looking to potentially install a or construct a four unit residential structure. Um, and so with that, I would pass it over to Jeff. Thanks, Gary. Um, thanks for meeting with us tonight. Thank you, welcome for, thanks nice, for coming. Nice yeah, some of you in the past. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're just wondering conceptually um, how this would work as far as the layout goes. We're very aware of the uh, the, the core area with Penfield and, and what's going on with the historic area. So that would be the storefront. And in fact, mm -hmm. yes, a, a, a bakery type frontage is what we'd like to do with a retail space. But we'd also like to, in the back as Carrie said, have a multiple like a quad unit that we'd like to have um, for multiple family living. Hmm. In addition, on the front unit, um, some questions are, are we able to have apartment units off of that as well? So off of that street, that view right there. So if you had the, the frontage there for the bakery, mm -hmm. so the street frontage, you would see the, the bakery. Um, again, we understand the regulations that are involved. Can we go back behind the building though, and have additional areas of, of rental that would be possible, potential, and those are some of the concepts that we're trying to present tonight to understand if um, it's something that the town's in favor of and how that would work. That's something you probably could talk to the uh, 
to the town department because engineer, I think might be know, able to help us. On it, that. It's it's I mean, where the lot line goes. You know how far away it is from like Woodline. You know. Woodline I think they're looking down. at uses, but um, side, I mean, some of the board may recall this was. Um, potentially the former home of Aspen Lighter Vacuum. So well, we worked with Terry Williams, he had a building there. Right. He was looking at having his vacuum building with an apartment up above and I think something in the back. So I think they're looking to do something very similar to that. Um, obviously they need to look at site logistics, you know, as the grade goes on their property. Um, but that's, you know, Terry had looked at that piece, um, you know, had a building design, you know, in that area, opted to, you know, go to the former you know, church over on mm -hmm. Five Mile Line, mm -hmm. and that piece, you know, there was some issues in with the place. driveway location, yes. and it came down to the, the state DOT. You can actually see it in this picture, um, that's a catch basin in the street, so we made them aware of that, that he kind of got to the end of that project. The state said, hey, we don't want, and Carrie's got her cursor right on top of it, <laughs> we don't want the driveway driving right over our catch basin hey, can you move our catch basin, which meant digging up 441, relocating a lot of state infrastructure. Um, obviously that was, you know, a major issue concern, you know, from the, the owner before. We've made them aware of that and, you know, something they'll need to take into account as they build their building, flip the driveway to the other side, you know, look at an alternative layout. But, right. you know, this board had, you know, seen something similar to that in the past. Obviously they're, they're looking at an additional piece you know, in the rear, but I think just looking at, you know, the board's, you know, thoughts on, you know, uses on the parcel, and obviously we'd need to get into site, site plan, plans, stormwater, right. utilities, but that's kind of some of the back history. Yeah, before the, the applicants came in and had an informal conversation with us and mm -hmm. Mark and I, and I think we said before you proceed to design, we wanna make sure the town board's comfortable with the combination of uses. Is there any concern about there being you know, any issues or things that you want them to be thinking about as they're coming up with a potential design or site layout. Um, and so I, I thought it would be a good conversation and if there's no major objections and you say, please feel free to work with town staff, then I would direct them to prepare a concept and, and our PRC staff can review it and take a look. But we thought we have them introduce the idea here, mm -hmm. get any initial thoughts or feedback. Um, it's just a sort of an, uh, an infill development project. Can I ask one question on the, the entrance right now to that property, is it right there? That's the only uh, entrance right there? Well, th I'm gonna pull up the aerial that might. How you actually, how do I access that property if I wanted to right now? Yes, that is the, right the access. So it's kind of, there's mm -hmm. a quasi little parking lot there, yep. um, but that's the access. That's As they get into making, that's kind of a residential access drive. As you get into putting in the, you know, the, the curb line and making it more of a commercial driveway, you've got to widen that out a little bit, yeah. widen out the curb line, that's mm -hmm. when it got into the taper of that curb line, got into that catch basin, so that's just something right. they're gonna have to pay attention to and wanted to highlight that to them well, early on. there was a little house there years ago. Yes. Yep, that, that came years down years and then, yeah. so I say that's yeah. a, a residential driveway as you make it a, for a bakery or any other commercial aspect, you've got to modify that driveway, you can get, you know, vehicles in and out that, you know, maybe more of a delivery truck have you considered buying the restaurant next door that's been sitting there vacant for a couple of years? Is that of interest? <laughs> I, I think so. That would be perfect for you. Then you wouldn't have to think about going You're right. In no, the actually, we're longtime residents of Penfield. Yeah. I, I, I developed Ettrick Forest years ago, and mm -hmm. Mexican restaurant was nice until the building fell apart. Right. Um, yeah. Understood. Yes, there's certainly an interest there. Um, I'd like to work with the town on that as well, conceptually. And um, just want to kind of... I don't want to uh, load the wagon before I have the horses hooked up and that's why we're here. So okay. yeah, if, I mean, if our concept um, is, is favorable and mm -hmm. um, we can continue working forward, but that piece would fit perfectly in and it'd clean up, uh, it, it would clean that up. We'll just it say would. that. Yes, it would. Correct. Yep. Can me you happy. help me to, to visualize the concept a little better, please? So on the uh, parcel with the f storefront, is that bakery going to be like a single unit, like just a one product type shop, or is it going to be a multiple space? So from the street? Yes. Yeah, from, from the street it'll appear as one entity, one, one, one bakery frontage, one, one space. Okay. What we're looking at is behind it, so to hide yep. anything that we have behind it. Yep, so I, so, I, so if I just, can we walk through the property together? So it's gonna be a single storefront. I imagine there to be at least a small parking lot in the rear of the bakery, is that right? 
Yes. And then going deeper into your parcel, that would be where the multifamily housing Correct. unit would be. So for that multifamily housing unit, can you tell me, are you envisioning single story multifamily, double story, three story, how are the families going to be situated? Yeah, it would be probably an over under quad is what it would be, two stories, same, over, same under level. Over under quad, what is an over under quad? Um, so it would be two units above and two okay. units below. Okay. Okay. So each unit would be a single story. Yep. And is the parking lot for that multifamily units, is that going to be um, a separate lot or are they going to be also using? It would be a separate lot. Okay. And is that separate lot going to be, um, can you tell me how it would be situated relative to I, 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 yeah, where, where would it be? Because I'm seeing like the front of the well, actually, the parcel is very elongated. We need to know, I mean, those are some great questions. So number one, um, we have to work with Mark as far as your retention pond goes yeah. and, and developing the area. So these are, this is just a concept meeting. Wherever we can put it in, um, we would with how we had positioned the unit, but it would be back over the actual 48 inch right now, correct, Mark? There's a easement there for the uh, pass through of the creek that's actually <laughs> underneath that parcel that runs um, from the, that'd be from the east to the west. So it would be back there, the parking lot, to answer your question, it would not be at the front because you'd have to have individuals walk from right, like, right, right. the front to the back, mm -hmm. which is, I don't know anyone that wants to walk. That is convenient, sure. Exactly, mm -hmm. that far. Yeah, I mean, I'd be concerned, I don't know about how the, um, because it's such a steep, it's not a steep slope, but it's, a, it's such a, a it, steep hill going down and, mm -hmm. and, you know, the park. I, I remember when the restaurant was there and if you park down there, you know, and sometimes it rained or whatever, it was, it was awful. You know, there, there might be problems with that way, but the other one would be the fact that it's so close to Woodside and you got those neighbors that are be overlooking the apartments and, um, you know, that, that, that it's a possible concern. Yeah, it's too. actually tucked back pretty good. Um, Is it? There's a large wooded knoll okay. that uh, that's there from the east and to the south, and we're immediately bordered with a daycare. Okay. Yeah. On on the other side, that right. is wide open, kind of you know, an open field area. Mm. So. All right. So as Carrie turned on, that's our stream layer. So that blue line shows where the creek used to go through. Um, that's that pipe's been extended over the years. It kind of was piped through pea pods. It was extended through this area. So we do have. Uh, a storm sewer that runs through the middle of that, so that would preclude where some of the building and, and parking would be located. So as they talk, the main building would be right up on the front of the road, little parking lot behind it, mm -hmm. and then the other building would need to be behind that as well as their parking lot, um, just due to the size of the pipe. Obviously, we don't want a parking right. little, we'll have a driveway over it. We don't want a building or any infrastructure over the top of our pipe, so that yep. would push yeah. the building behind that, that area. So, so given that it's in the very infant stages, I, um, I'm not a, a opposed to the idea, but I, I think I would want the residential unit, again, if it's the over under quad, I wouldn't want like a giant, you know, um, no. something that's... Um, um, High story. Or, yeah. yeah, like not, not, not um, like so obviously visible from, yeah. from the road, I guess. But if it's offset deeper into the, the property, I guess my only concerns would be um, kind of like the conversation that we had with the other development. What is the continuity of flow going to be like of persons and vehicular traffic? And then w how is it going to, it, what's the impact, if any, towards um, the neighbors on Woodside, right? So I guess as yeah. you... Um, I agree. Have to engineer w w with Mark um, as a layout and, and the physical limitations to that property, right? I would I, I would be open okay. to the proposal. So, right, I'd be open for conversations with the town so staff. I, and I I wanted to qu a question. I want to get back to the um, the curb cut and the Route 441 because I know that's one of the things that's a a, a, a concern mm -hmm. that we have, and we have been hearing a lot of the. the We've been hearing, I've been hearing a lot in the supervisor's office about traffic concerns about some of the other businesses trying to get in and out of 441, specifically um, P-Pods. Uh, there's been a lot of, there's a lot of traffic that's in there and out of there during the day. So I've heard of that 
so I would be concerned about exactly where a curb cut would be and how um, just realistically and, and bringing that extra traffic into that, you know, if you're talking four units, you're talking again, you know, besides the, the retail piece, the folks that would be living in there, that's a, that's quite a few more, you know. Yeah, we would have them work, in and out. New York State DOT would be an mm -hmm. involved agency just because it's on their roadway. Right. So any modification to the curb cut would be a highway permit through New York State DOT and if they were concerned about the intensity of the use or the trip generation, they would identify that and request a traffic impact assessment. But we typically yield to you know the permitting agency, whether it's the county or the state, mm -hmm. um, and they would let us know if there was gonna be excessive trip generation as a result of mm -hmm. any of the proposed development. So we'll certainly have them communicate with DOT. Not, I know you can't answer for the state, but is that curb cut that's currently there, is there an option to flip it to the other edge of the property, the opposite Yeah, edge? and that's what we share with them early on. Mm -hmm. It's just we kind of got to the late stages of the last plan, the town board had approved it, and the state said, oh wait, by the way, we don't like that our storm structure's in front of that, so you know, obviously having early on conversations. I was also gonna share the last plan had interconnections with the property next door. With the tailor? With no, to the west, so it was Itacate, I don't know if it's okay. in any business the now. Yeah. There was an interconnection there, obviously if that could continue, obviously if we can have you know the rear connections between properties as we've done in, in other yeah. locations, yeah. Yeah. you've yeah. got multiple access points, yeah. so if one exit yeah. isn't yeah. working or has issues, you can kind of spread that load out <coughs> across those, and obviously the state would wanna see that there's interconnections, but also if we can limit curb cuts as well. Right. You know that's a benefit. Right. Would there time. be a way to connect that in that tailor right next door? Because that's a close, that close proximity. To I mean, you're we looking don't for. currently have an access agreement. Mm -hmm. That could be a conversation. It depends where the building falls. Um, so we don't have curb cuts right. We, after we don't each have other anything, like you know, with them that would require the the tailor to to connect. Okay. Um, depending on how this lays out, you know, that could be a conversation. I know we did, yeah. and I'd have to look back if it was a filed easement or not, or just a conversation. But you know, the the planned. Uh, vacuum location was gonna show interconnection to the Itacate yes. at that time parcel, Peapod's driveway. Um, yeah. So I think the more interconnections we can have between those obviously helps to kind of spread that mm -hmm. that traffic mm -hmm. out. It would be, that would be very be beneficial, I think, to be looking at yeah. that, so. Do you have any other thoughts or questions as part of the conversation? No, not so much. You, you definitely mentioned the structure, and like we said, we're in the infantile stage of this. We The other developer that was here, spoke of a three-story building with it looks yep. like an attic so um it would be no it would be no larger than that okay so it's, that's it's helpful the, yeah just okay. to yeah. give you, a, you know, an idea do you envision still like a residential kind of look not a commercial building look or absolutely is, is yeah it would be more like that more like a townhousey look if you <laughs> if, yeah. if you will maybe still trying to fit the character of an older feel that still well, that's gonna be say. so far back. I don't know if you're gonna have me carry that all the way back through that far from the road. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're gonna see it. Um, however, it's gonna be very tasteful and mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna you know, go through and present to you and understand what your recommendations are. But um, as far as the exact historic, so the bakery is gonna be you know, right to the standards that you guys have provided, I understand that. But as far as that unit in the back, um, you know, we weren't thinking that, but um, yeah. like you said, be very it, taste. It'll like, be very. Like you say, we're not sure where it would be on that parcel as it is probably exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But it's I, pretty far back. But I think the important one is definitely up on the curbside. You know, making sure that that fits that feel of the four corners as best as possible. That would we're, be my. Yeah, we're extremely sensitive to that, and we're aware of the pedestrian flow of traffic. And like I said, we're residents. Nick, Nick actually owns. I developed the old Ettrick Forest. Nikki lives on Five Mile Line Road oh, right okay. now, right across from uh, the park. Gotcha. And um, you know we love it here, and we understand the feel, and we don't want to do anything but help and improve. And and we're coming before you guys to see if we can partner up. And, I appreciate. And it. I mean that is yeah. a, that is a parcel or two there that you know uh, yeah. struggle sometimes to. Right. Yes. Bakery would be nice. Yeah, the, the right. idea of a bakery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we welcome it. Amen. So I think next steps are you work with um, Miss yeah. Ivers there and okay. and get some uh, plans going and present back to us. Sounds great, thank you so much thank for your you, time. Thank you, you guys thank very you guys. much. Appreciate that, okay. I think that's it for our guests. We go to action items, I think. Ms. Ivers, Carrie, we got 2132, 
Five mile line administrative review. Yeah, so okay. this is an application we received for a new tenant to occupy an existing tenant space at 2132 Five Mile Line Road. Uh, we've seen several of these in the last year and a half of new tenants, uh, which were always welcoming uh, new businesses into the community. Um, the applicant did already present their panel sign and got approval through the Historic Preservation Board. And so to, uh, this seemed to fit all of the check boxes for an administrative issuance of a conditional use permit. So if you're amenable to that, I would ask for a, um, a, a motion to allow me to issue the permit administratively and I can work with the uh, new tenant from there. No, board, any? No. Everybody good? I'd like I move that we, uh, that we uh, an, um, grant administrative, appro uh, administrative review so. to go to 20, 2132 Five Mile Line Road. We have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Moved by Cole, second by Akinen. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akinden. Aye. All aye. Thank you. Thank you. Motion passes, so we'll see that for the next um, board meeting. Thank you Thank so you. much. Next on our list is the 2023 Comprehensive Plan Update. Carrie. Yes, so I, this is really a Mark and me no thing, but, Mark too. but um, so obviously we had the public hearing on July 5th. Mm -hmm. Um, um, public comment was received at the meeting. Um, adi in addition, we've received um, written communication. You all have received copies. Uh, town staff has re received that as well. We are in the process of going through um, all of the comments. Um, and I think there was some, you know, certainly some uh, uh, shared themes and some uh, ideas about additions or modifications to the plan that we can look at making. And so staff, you know, based on, uh, um, you know, the input received, we'll be coming back to make some suggest, identify edits, and certainly wanted to get your feedback if there's mm -hmm. issues or concerns that you heard either at the public hearing or in the written communication that you wanna ensure that we, um, you know, that gets reflected in the next version mm -hmm. of the, or the updated version of the, of, the, of the draft plan. I would want to sh mm -hmm. talk about that tonight. Um, also wanted just to, just as for some background, I know we heard lots of, um, lots of input and I think it's really important to differentiate the comprehensive plan from follow-up action plan or follow-up planning endeavors that are typically identified as a activity or a follow-on action item in a comp plan. And so typically the comprehensive plan is a fairly broad document and identifies a general direction for variety of topics um, and often will recommend if something needs further study or mm -hmm. more detailed analysis. And so um, it's, those are certainly the kinds of things that we'll be looking at to make sure that those recommendations for future action or future planning are clearly uh, stated in the plan. But we wanna be careful about not embedding into the comprehensive plan things that should be a standalone planning mm -hmm. document, if no. that makes any sense. No, no, I understand that. Okay. And I appreciate, I think the board has been receiving emails and uh, mm -hmm. document information from people still some, wanting to submit their questions and concerns. Still open, I said, I think last time that uh, till this meeting, I think at the end of the week, we can safely say that if every, anybody would still like to submit any questions, concerns to the update, um, by all means, please do that. And then as Carrie says, we'll be reviewing that, the board and <coughs> with the comp plan. Right, and, so um, staff will be taking a look at everything, um, certainly, welcoming any input, mm -hmm. comments, questions that the board has as you know, you're know you reviewing and responding or reviewing and reacting to um, the input received. Um, and then we'll continue this conversation um, and take a look at some edits. And one of the things, because of mm -hmm. this document size mm -hmm. and the fact that it's it's been uh, it's prepared in a, in a um, application that does not allow you to track changes like you can in Word, mm -hmm. um, what we'll do is we'll prepare sort of a an overview of where changes were made. We're not gonna document every minor grammatical and or word replacement change, but sure. major changes, new additions, ideas, you know, mm -hmm. new actions, things like that will certainly be pointing out or places where language was clarified or um, maybe where we made some changes so that the information's more clearly communicated. Mm -hmm. Good. And we're gonna try to make sure we're not taking out all of the planner-ish 
language, there you yeah. go. the jargon. And, and again, I think we should thank Mr. Valentine and Carrie for you all the work on this. I know Doug Stanks are still besides yes. the committee on this, so it's a lot. It's a it's a labor of love, I think, to to continue this. So, so I want to thank you very much for that. So. Um, board, unless are you guys getting the uh, the communications from residents? Or we are. Oh. We're, yes. So, um, mm -hmm. in addition to the supervisor's office forwarding them on, um, uh, Amy Steckloff has also been sharing any communication communication coming in. She's really maintaining that sort of record. Okay, great. And we're um, we're also and you, we've been forwarding to you to the board as well. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yeah. If you see it, we're seeing it. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So, Good. As they come. So thank you. Uh, any other discussion? No. Okay, thanks for that update, Carrie. Next, I think we go to 1385 Empire Boulevard Dance Connection, modifications to the approved plan. Yeah, so um, as you know, uh, 1385 Dance Connection has, um, they are open. Um, I wanted to have them come in and chat with you about some of the site, um, uh, site construction elements that don't um, fully match what was approved by the town board. Um, the engineering staff has been out, um, and I, I know um, the, and Mark can certainly speak to some of the items as well. I think that some of the uh, changes were mi very minor. Uh, for example, planter boxes instead of foundation plantings, that was an administrative or a field mm -hmm. change, mm -hmm. not, um, not a significant issue. But the, I think there's probably two elements is that the area of parking has expanded slightly, and then also the current site has millings, mm -hmm. and this is maybe where I'm gonna rely on Mark for the technical comparison, instead of asphalt paving. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't a, a change that I felt that staff could say yes or no to. We thought that's something that the town board should take a look at, and I would, um, I'll be happy to bring up some pictures that the applicant has provided, sure. and the applicant um, and the uh, and is here as well, so they can answer your questions. But Thank I'll bring you. them. I have a Thanks question to to start. Um, I couldn't tell from the site plan that was approved versus the as built. Can you tell me in terms of? I mean, square footage won't really help me either. But can you just help me to understand like? What is, how much did it exceed by, by what was approved? Um, so we met with Steve on site, we kind of walked through, did a punch list. Um, they had some additional millions areas, they, they pulled those back. Um, so as Carrie's pulling up the site plan, there's kind of two areas that expanded the parking. So uh, I think there's a two car parking area um, by the, 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 the biofilter bio area, pond. and then there's another part in the front. Um, you know, that's a little bigger than what the board had initially approved, but I think it's needed, found to be needed, you know, on site. Um, there were some other additional uh, millings that were on the one side of the building. Um, they've since removed those, put those great back to green space. Um, so kind of the, uh, you're looking at the building, the parking in front. Um, so that piece where Carrie's highlighting was kind of an additional add on the other side of, of the pole. So there's an existing pole with a guy wire. Those few little spaces okay. were added there. And then if you pull a little further to the left, those two spaces um, were added there uh, kind of on the other side of the, the biofilter area. So the expansion, I think, is minor. Um, okay. One of the, the, the asphalt or the, the millings that were on the east side of the building, um, you know, we had some concern about those. They removed those, they put that back to, to green space. And then I know the board was key on the entrance area, mm -hmm. um, converting or making that back to one entrance. They've gone back and seated that and then stabilize that area. They kind of had an entrance on both sides of their entryway, so they, they revised that. They've done the plantings on on that pond area. So I think it's down to kind of the, the two elements as Carrie highlighted, um, the slight expansion of the parking. They can speak to the, the demand, the need, um, and then whether the board is comfortable with the millions. I think Carrie is pulling up some pictures. So that's the entranceway. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, it had kind of an entrance on both sides, so to get back to what the this state one. DOT allowed, yep. they pulled that out. They've since seeded it. You can see the straw there. Yep. Um, and then I think Carrie may be pulling up, you know, showing that other. So that's the other little added on, um, you know, milling area or parking area that, that they've added. And then there was a little piece on the other side. So it looks like four, four parking additional units. parking spaces. Okay. Yep. And if if we were to say no, go back, um, what would that turn into? Um, it would go back to a, a, a grass area. Um, uh, obviously, I think they feel that they need those um, spaces. That's why they've added them. Um, just I'm sure in the turnover of classes and everything else, they can speak 
you know, more to that. Um, the other piece is the millings. Um, so that's basically uh, ground up asphalt right, 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 put right. down so it's not a, a true pavement, it is a hard surface. Um, you can see here, you know, even with striping, you know, the striping kind yep. of fades mm -hmm. yep. quickly, winter maintenance. So that was something that we wanted to come back to the board and make sure you're comfortable with that or have concerns that you share that and it wasn't something that, you know, was a, a minor field change or minor yep. modification that yep. the board so would handle administratively. I, I have questions for the applicants next, but just trying to understand it um, from from your view, Mark. It, what is there an environmental impact or um, the additional spaces? No, concern? I don't. I don't okay. see it as a major. A lot of extra. We're going to have additional stormwater issues, concerns, mm -hmm. impact the steep slopes. So I think I think those are relatively minor. I don't see a major impact of the the parking expansion. And as to as the milling. Left have some concern about winter maintenance, um, you know, as well as the striping. Sure. And, and then, well, as handicap accessibility, you know, millings are gonna set a little bit. If you're trying to get, you know, wheelchairs or somebody in and out of the building, you've kind of got that settled lip area. You know, that one's a little bit more, um, I won't say the judgment call, but, you know, it, it's not the same as pavement. It does provide a hard surface, um, but as you plow in wintertime, you're gonna end up, you know, kind of digging that up a little bit more, sure. or defining yeah, a yeah. handicap space. Yeah. So I guess one thing, and, and maybe you want to ask that same question. I is I maybe know the answer, but the reason you guys decided to mill rather than to do the asphalt paving, Jeff? Well, at the time it was mainly to try to reduce our costs for the building yes, and Steve. keep, because yeah. my tenant is also my wife. Yeah. <laughs> so I was <laughs> trying to keep the the rent as low as possible yeah. for her and that also extends to reducing costs for building. Did you have any plans to pave at some point or was this, did you it just kind of plan that Millings was probably gonna be sufficient long-term? So originally when Jim was still here, I was talking to him mm -hmm. and um, so most of our, a lot of the property, um, the rest of the property is mainly Millings too and I said, Let's, I will, at, when we first started, I said, let's leave it, see how it goes, let it settle, if nothing else, if it's a problem in the winter, then yes, I'd, I'd go ahead and pave it because I don't want yeah. ongoing problems. Right. Um, but last winter it was mild, but it, there really was no, it held up much better than yeah. I expected. Maybe not a true freeze or, you know. Yeah, there. It, so it's hard to say because it was. Yeah. Do you have the gravel base that that would be, um, I guess, specified for paving? Is that, uh, is there gravel under that or is it millings or how's it? In a lot of areas, there is gravel underneath. In some, especially out further away from the building, it gets to mainly just millings. Just mill. I get a question mark. I don't I believe any of the, the buildings. I went down there the other day. I was trying to figure out if there was anybody still has milling on their property for any new applications uh, versus pay, uh, asphalt. Um, as I said, some of the older properties do, yes. Right. Any of the, the new properties. construction, no, it's typically yep. Yep. all asphalt on, on new new developments. Can you talk to me about the, the need for the additional four? Originally, at their old building, they had only 13 parking spaces. Mm -hmm. And so we thought there was going to be plenty. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out it wasn't. Um, I don't know if it was from the moving and they just got additional students or the lobby's bigger now, so maybe more parents are staying, but there is definitely, the parking lot's always full and it definitely is needed. When you have a class in there, how, about how many people are in the, in in a time and a night if you have how many? So if we were to have a two and three year old class, uh -huh. there's 10 parents that will stay most likely. But if you have a class of 15 teenagers, you're not gonna have any cars okay. in the parking lot. So it really depends on the age of the student. Uh -huh. um, we do have adult classes that we hit a max at 10 to 15 for that age um, for our studio size. So you have an adult class, you have 10 to 15 cars for the adult class. Um, and it could be running at the same time as a teen class, 
where there's no cars staying. So it really depends on what time, what classes are in, what age the kids are. Yep, okay. So in considering future growth, potentially, or if you decide to hold like a dance event or a dance recital, will the 17 slots be enough? So we would never hold um, a recital there. Okay. It's, it's just not set up for that. An event, um, I guess it depends on the size of the event. We have an open house coming up in August and we're kind of crossing our fingers that we will have enough sp space for that. Um, just because it usually is a very big hit and because of the move and it being so. Um, so if you don't so have enough space, where yeah. would you park those cars? So they kind of made up their own parking spots and then they also decided to go down onto his property and they parked oh, in overflow kind of on his property. On your property? Yes. Okay. But on the rest, because they're all one parcel. Yep. It's just. She's on that vacant, well, the old vacant lot. Okay. Because our old studio only had 13 spots, um, I am very used to spacing out the classes to kind of keep that under consideration. Um, obviously, everything's not perfect, mm -hmm. but the more parking space, the better. So let me ask it a different way. Okay. Are there areas on the property currently or with the restrictions, Mark, I'm trying to understand, can we now add additional parking spaces and do it the right way of having it be revised with the plan and coming before the board? I mean, I think the areas they have designated now, if that works for them, I think those spots work. I don't think those are detrimental to what's there now. So I think they kind of took out the areas that you know, where some extra overflow and Carrie's pulling up kind of their access down on there. Um, you know, I think if they memorialize kind of what they have now and then have the board come back and. I'm thinking in excess of the 17. If we wanted to add an additional four, are they able to do that on their. Um, I mean, it's overall, it's overall the same property. So Steve could look at, you know, if there was, you know, parking off of his entrance drive as an overflow space, you know, you could look at, you know, that. The grade starts to go down, but you could, you know, possibly have, you know, parking along that side or, you know, a pull off here that they could add some more spaces. Up above, you kind of fall off the grade on the back, so there's not a lot of room there. Okay. The area on the side of the building, I mean, you'd have cars, you'd be blocked in, so yeah. that's really not yeah. an optimal space. Yep. So most likely would be on their, you know, that entrance drive going down into the remainder of, of the applicant's property. They could put a, a pull off area on the side. I think, you know, as I said, people kind of do that now. Our biggest concern, if it's on their property, that's one thing. Our concern is people start parking out on Empire Boulevard, yeah. similar yeah, I, to I think, yeah. Bar Bill or any yeah. others we've looked at recently. We just don't yeah. want people deciding, you know, hey, there's no more yeah. spaces here. Let's park out on the state highway and then we've got an unsafe situation. If they can find a spot internally, park along that access drive, you know, make a space in there or designate, you know, some, some pull off areas you know, along that entrance, and it looks like there's kind of a little you know, gravel area there, you know, whether that's an overflow space. Again, if it's off the state right away and on their property, you know, I guess I don't have a concern about that. I think going forward, though, I, the only thing, I, my personal feeling is, as far as being, you know, a uniform, we're trying to be um, fair and concisive to everyone. If we asked you to, you know, pave your property, we've asked an, another, you know, develop development coming in the same thing. To me, that piece of it is not being gravel versus paved. I've got a little bit of an issue with that, only to be fair, only because somebody, the next person comes in and wants the same thing you guys want. And we're, you know, we just had a perfect example is, you know, I mean, it's existing, but Bar Bill came in and redid their parking lot. Um, and it's a paved parking lot. I mean, they're right down the road. I mean, we are kind of, you know, a asking, that's one of the big, our big issues is with, especially in that corridor is parking and uh, safety and things like that. So uh, um, as far as the piece of being, having asphalt, I don't know how the board feels about that, but I, uh, you know, would think, I would hope that we, we can keep the conformity and, and have, you know, the project came in with a plan to have it paved. Um, I would like to see it paved, so. I, I agree with you. It, you want the consistency and, you know, it, it should have come before the 
the staff here at the town to talk about it, to, and you wouldn't have done the milling. You know, it would probably stayed uh, gone as asphalt if you were going to do anything. And uh, I think and I, can I think understand it's important that. to do that. Yeah, I can appreciate. I understand it's probably a cost thing, and, yeah. and you get into you know, but conceivably, you know, that's this is a you know project that you know that. I mean, that's my feeling. I don't know how the board feels. I feel like what we do for one, we should yeah. be uniform to do for. Right, it sets a precedent if you don't, and somebody yeah. down the street wants to do the milling, and we or, or the you know we give them a, a break. Uh, it, it just gets very confused, and you want to be consistent and keep it. And I would be fine with if if we could find those parking spots. If you need those additional four, if that's if the board if the if you engineering feels that that's a. Um, you know, looking at those spots, that that's something they can have for parking spots yeah, versus the, green if space. If the board's comfortable with adding those additional spaces, I don't see that as a detriment to the to the stormwater. I think, you know, those have been working. They took out the one area that, you know, we kind of saw was, you know, a little excessive on that other side of the building. They've already, you know, rectified that in the entrance. So the existing area they have now, we're comfortable with that. It would be four additional than what you originally had approved. In your but building if the is a, comfortable with that, then your building's a beautiful building. I think that you know paving it would only add to that. You know, I, I know you probably don't see it that way, but um, I think it's a beautiful um, piece that I think the paving would just add so much, you know, to your to your property. I just have a couple of questions that Mr. Tate, being here, might actually be beneficial <laughs> since he's our I'll call him our asphalt expert. Um, I've had limited experience with millings, but. I've seen somewhere, and I haven't walked on that property, I haven't gone down to see that yet, so, um, but I've seen some cases where the millings are bigger in size and they tend to adhere better and they end up being almost like asphalt in a way. And I've seen others that the pieces seem to be a lot smaller and it ends up being almost like gravel, a real small gravel and it's never really solid. Can you tell me what this current property is and, and a little bit about millings compared to asphalt. Sure. So I mean, I put you on the spot. Millings themselves are it. It is recycled ground asphalt. Uh, so it's what was taken off of a road that was to be resurfaced. A mill comes down the road. It kind of grinds and removes the top layer. You know, as you mentioned, that it, you could have fine millings. You could have you know kind of larger rough millings. It, it's going to somewhat depend if you're you know scratching the surface. If we were going to do a Nova chip job for the county, and we're taking half to three quarters of an inch off the road, you're gonna get just the fine millings off the surface. If we're doing a full, you know, full depth reclamation where we're dropping down four inches, you're gonna get big chunks as you take out four inches at a time. Um, well, I haven't been out to the site to actually look and see, you know, what exactly that the millings consist of. You know, Steve, you may be able to, to better speak on behalf of that. Um, I mean, the vast majority of you know, our parking lots at Greenwood Park, um, Sherwood Fields, uh, those are those are a mix of stone and asphalt millions parking lots. Um, you know, that's what we've got in certain spots. Um, it, it's working, but they're also being that they're parks. They're, I don't want to say seasonal. They they are open year round. However, the Kind of the draw to them is more seasonal, more spring, it's, summer, fall. It's a fall. different use case. Correct. Yeah. Um, so that while they do work for parking lots, you know, it's really up to the, I guess, the owner, the the user of that, how well it's it's working for you. Is it? Can you plow snow off of them? Yes. Is it the most convenient, or would I prefer to? No. Um, you know, it 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 will take more upkeep just to make sure as you know any potholes whether it's settlement whether it's you know catching one of the bigger chunks with the plow um, and making sure that that's level and, and filled back in you know that that would be up and, to and can you the pave, owner to do can that. you pave over what he has there now or does that have to come out or nope. maybe Steve you, you certainly could pave over that I mean I would recommend because um, I'm sure you you probably have it pretty close to the the finished surface of the concrete for that patio area I if it were me, I would at least peel it back a little bit um, to make sure that you can get enough in that it's gonna, the new asphalt when you pave is actually gonna hold, um, but you can certainly pave over millings no different than you would over stone. Okay. 
So I will just share generally my concerns of how an application comes in, and when we review and approve, it's there are certain assumptions that hold that it's going to be built according to the application and, and the site plan. And so to hear that it deviated is a little disappointing to me, and I think kind of the concerns that Mark generated with, with safety and freeze and potential of um, the markings not being as visible, and I don't know if it was intended to um, uh, redo the markings every month or what the plan was, but it, I, I'm not hearing um, an intent to upkeep th that kind of um, element. I'm not opposed to, to the addition of the four spots, hearing that there is no environmental or engineering impact and there's a clear justification for the increased parking. And so my, my vote or my thought would be, um, I, I am going to ask that you hold to the um, mm -hmm. application as it was reviewed and approved by the board. If not, um, I think it does trigger the enforcement arm of the <coughs> town. Um, and I would be interested to hear what, what, that, um, what that recommendation and plan would be if, if we were to hear the applicants would, would be non-cooperative. Um, but if, if you do go with the site plan as approved, I would be open to hearing, um, uh, having the four additional spots be approved as part of that. And I would be also open to hear any additional parking that you would want um, considered as part of that. If there is overflow um, adjacent to the building or even a holdover, for example, like the owner or the instructors for the dance that aren't going to be in and out frequently, if they are um, alongside of the building or to yeah. the rear of the building where it's, you're not gonna be adding to the congestion flow while students and parents are trying to get out after class. I'm open to hearing that because it, it sounds like there's growth, so I'm, I'm willing to accommodate the other spaces. I'm not willing to accommodate the milling, I'm sorry. Okay. So just to respond to your point, so mm -hmm. as far as enforcement, um, we took letter of credit for the project. Mm -hmm. We're still holding that letter of credit until we're satisfied and the board is satisfied. So um, basically we're holding their money until you're happy and if the board says it needs to be paved, we'll hold it until it's paved and it's completed and then at that point then we can re release the funds back to them. So that's our our first option. Obviously if mm -hmm. they still continue to refuse, you could go through code enforcement, everything code else. Code enforcement, um, well, there's actually the approval. A, there's um, a, there's a, um, a temporary certificate of occupancy because of the site elements that needed to be, so there was the retention pond and there was delay in plant materials being available. So for you know, a variety of reasons, a temporary CFO is a pretty common um, mm -hmm. occurrence during mm -hmm. um, new construction. So that's the other, other factor here is that they don't have a final CFO until the site elements have been um, come into conformance with the approved plan. Yeah, so before we, before we yeah. get there, so it sounds like if I'm at least reading the board right, at least you had three persons that were in um, wanting to hold you to the plan, fair to say? S fair to say, mm -hmm. Steve, how do, how do you, now that we're asking you this, how do you feel about paving, about paving that property? Oh, to I, be applicable? To we will, um, it's just when I talked to Jim, he said I didn't have to at the time, but obviously so that's not correct. Jim Costello is no longer with yeah. our, you know, with the town, so, and that, you know, that that's, was is there, it, and I'm not asking the board first, but I'll ask you, is there a time frame to comply with that that works, you know, uh, a little better for you if the window of time to, to comply was? Oh, I'll just, I mean, I'll get quotes and we'll, hand, I mean, we'll handle it. Right. I was just um, hoping we didn't have to. And I know you have an open house coming up, so I hope that that wouldn't, you know, interfere with that. I mean, by all means, if you need some, if you need the time to, to do that. I mean, well, it'll never get done before then. Yeah. Yeah. Third, yeah, you're probably talking yeah. several months anyway, just to, yeah. to get a contractor yeah. lined yeah. up and so that would be. Done. I think what you're looking for, Mark and Carrie, is that um, you need a motion that we pro uh, move ahead with. Yeah, so this is one where I don't know if we need to do another, because there is a condition. Yeah. I don't know if we need to do a resolution or if this is just a, a vote to say we accept the additional four parking spaces, but we're holding to the um, the requirement for right. asphalt. Okay. Because the, the applicant was asking for sort of a waiver from what you right. had previously approved. Right. So I, I wonder if it's, um, for my thinking, I, I would need a little bit more information. So um, before we proceed, for what? Um, sp so specifically, like, 
um, I understand that it's, I'm not even gonna expect that it's done before the open house because we don't want to inhibit your course of business, right? But if you say I'm gonna get quotes this week and then they tell me, actually we can't even come to get your job done in the next six months. So it's not gonna be done before winter. So then what is the action required from the board? How, how long are you gonna be holding the letter of credit if no action can reasonably be taken in the next six months? I would not want to initiate the enforcement arm of the town if you tell me on good faith that it cannot be done before December or it cannot be done by April. I kind of need to know the timeline before I take the next step. That's where I'm coming from. So I would, I would can we put a touch base on this? Um, at the next work session, can I ask that the applicants give an, an update to Ms. Ivers in the interim of what is the timeline expected? Um, what are, I, I'm sure, I'm, I'm assuming you have to get finances shored up um, or to calendar this? Uh, maintenance, right? And would then, we know? Would we? Would you have an idea in the next at our next work, by our next work session by next month, uh, whether or not you? The next work session is going to be held on August 16th, if I'm quoting mm -hmm. correctly. So that give you enough time to obtain a quote or quotes for the service to be done or the asphalt to be installed. Well, yes. Yeah, so the company I would have paved, they're a tenant of ours too. So he might be able to squeeze me in. I'll, I'll have to talk to him. Sure. I'll talk yeah, to him yeah. tomorrow. But we could get an update by our next work yes. session about what how we're, you're going to proceed. Yes. Okay. Okay. So if I'm hearing correctly, the four parking additional parking spaces are okay to stay. We're not asking him to take those out, cor Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And so then the next step would be at next work session, it will be Mark that's going to be presenting the uh, updated information because I will not be here. Mm -hmm. I'll be on vacation. Um, but um, we'll, we can certainly provide more information and I'm happy to furnish any updated information I receive from the applicant Sooner um, than late, right. in, as soon as I receive mm -hmm. it. So this way the town board's aware and you guys, you, you all can continue the conversation at the next work session. So, so quick question, if they do have, um, if they do comply with the paving, then there's no, uh, uh, no action needed by the board, right? Because there's Correct. no request for a waiver. So it'd right. be more of an informational item at that point. It would be, right. and I think, it, um, I think for this, we're gonna add the updated as-built plan as part of the record. Mm -hmm. Having this as the documentation, you might wanna maybe take a, a vote. I'm not, I'm, not, oh. I'm not the town attorney, but I would suggest we might memorialize the approval of the four additional parking spaces yes, by I think a vote among the board. And then we can add that into mm -hmm. the record. So I would move for an approval to grant a waiver of the additional four parking mm -hmm. spaces um, as non-compliant with the uh, application as it was approved. So in other words, the, uh, the four additional parking spaces are okay. Okay. To grant mm -hmm. a waiver. Grant the um, approval. Grant the approval, really. Not a waiver, it's approval. I think you could grant the approval of approval. the revised submission yeah. or oh, the revised okay. plan. Right. It's not a waiver, really. Yeah. Perfect. Good. I'll second that. Okay, moved by Lee, second by Cole. Roll call vote on that, please, Sue. Draw. Aye. <coughs> Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. All aye. Thank you. Thank you guys very much for coming. We thank appreciate you. it. Thank, and you. thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is our Ruth, Ruth Brayman bit meeting a room renovation <coughs> bid result, review rather, and that's Mr. Tate. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at the mm -hmm. Excel sheet uh, that just had a little bit of, or I guess the, the summary. Um, so we did have the bid opening for that um, a few weeks ago on July 7th. Um, while I was unable to attend that, um, I know my uh, facilities foreman, Jim Crackman, uh, was able to. We did receive two bids, uh, one from Struck and & Sons and one from FW Construction Corporation. Uh, we have previously worked with FW Construction Corporation. To the best of my knowledge, uh, we have not formally worked with Struck & Sons uh, to date. However, um, with some of the flooding issues that we've recently had in the basement, um, we're actually uh, going to be working with them on the kind of remediation, restoration um, for that. Yeah. Um, they did provide an extremely detailed uh, bid yeah. above and beyond kind of just what they gave for the lump sums of each of the items broken out. Um, I know even, I can say even with the kind of our basement project being separate, 
Um, the insurance adjuster that we've been working with was extremely familiar with Struck and Sons and, and had no yeah. question over what they were quoting for that project. Um, I feel comfortable they actually even threw in um, a, kind of their own general conditions, um, you know, and a, a, a cost with that, um, and their bid was still the, the lowest. Um, they did submit all of the documentation that was required, um, you know, mm -hmm. so they've got their non-collusive bidding agreement, being that there's ARPA funding that was allocated for this project. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, there was also some additional kind of paperwork that they had to sign uh, just because of the use of that funding. Um, so I've got all of that. I'm comfortable with, with moving forward and you know, wanted to see if the board had any questions um, or wanted to, or if not, wanted to make the recommendation to prepare a resolution to award the contract. I have a question on the quote by Struck and Sons. Can you explain to me what the asterisk for general conditions is and why that's a variance with FNW? Uh, so F, um, FW Construction did not provide uh, within the actual bid form. I had the kind of the, the top um, rows that you see. So the kitchenette cabinets, countertop mm -hmm. and plumbing work, uh, the exhaust, uh, kitchenette exhaust fan removal, the flooring and base cove, the window removal, um, and so on. I had those as kind of lines to fill out for a lump sum. Um, they had indicated some additional general conditions and I'm just trying to pull that up for you. So they, they um, put some additional things for the, like the painting of the, the walls within the room itself. Um, one of the walls was anticipated, it's uh, currently a, a painted masonry block wall, um, but to have, to actually be furred out and finished with drywall. Um, so rather than including it, I guess they more or less broke it out, rather than including an additional cost under the painting, they put it, they kind of somewhat separated it into their own line. So the total is still the total, um, but things for the the drop ceiling like that's in this room to be able to make adjustments to the actual frame for that. They, they just further separated their own okay. line item so, rather um, than lumping it into to something else that they didn't think was as applicable. So it's not a buffer. It is something no. that will have to be done as part Correct. of the scope of work. Correct. And it might not have been um, detailed as part of what we requested, but they're saying in order for them to adequately or professionally do what we're asking, Correct. this is item that they've, yes. okay. 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 I didn't see any problem. I actually was attended the bid. I thought it was a good, yeah. <laughs> so it was interesting. So All I right. thought it was very, any questions? It seems to be. Okay, then I would, uh, based on the explanation, I would move that we authorize the bid to Struck and Sons. Yes. Second. I'll second that. Move by Lee, seconded by Akadin. Can we have a roll call vote on that, please, Sue? Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. All aye. Thank you so. Next, our favorite D uh, DPW vehicle purchases. Mr. Tate, it's you again. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, as I've come to this board in the past, um, over the past few years, purchasing and acquiring vehicles has been a difficulty due to limited build slots, um, you know, some of which have even built, uh, I guess, requests and um, vehicle builds have been accepted and then mm -hmm. uh, later rejected by manufacturers due to lack of, you know, materials and mm -hmm. products. Um, in the uh, 2021 and 2022 budget, um, respectively, we, we had a vehicle in the highway and uh, the parks department allocated for uh, replacement. Um, unfortunately, we were not able to you know, make a purchase or acquire those vehicles. Um, however, I have been able to, um, I guess, work with a dealer that has those vehicles available on their lot. Um, you know, the parks truck, it, it is a cabin chassis, so they would have to actually add on the um, the dump body, the, the salter, the plow um, itself, and outfit that truck, um, but would need to be done no matter what. They, they physically have the truck, um, you know, reserved for us, um, you know, if we do want that. 
Um, same thing with the half ton. There are a few um, additional add-ons, the light bar, the toolbox, um, and back rack for that. Uh, they were budgeted for in the 2021 and 2022 budgets. However, because we weren't able to buy them, uh, the money re reverted back to the Highway Equipment Reserve Fund and the unassigned general fund balance. Um, as, you know, I want to say it was probably a month, month and a half ago that I was here um, and was able to, you know, or discussed with the board for a vehicle for the building department as well as for the assessor's department. Uh, was able to work with actually the same dealership um, off of piggyback contracts uh, to acquire those. Um, same dealership in this situation. Good. Uh, the half ton they've got off of the Village of Esperance um, piggyback contract and the uh, Parks one ton plow truck um, is actually off of a Monroe County bid. Good. Um, okay. So the, the dollar amounts for those, the um, pickup truck is uh, comes in at fifty five thousand three hundred and sixty two dollars and fifty cents mm -hmm. the uh, plow truck is at eighty six thousand and ninety five dollars uh, both of those include delivery to us so while the dealerships in Albany I don't have to make a road trip great all right so I guess my my ask to the board is um, given that these were included in past budgets um, is it we did with the other um, the other vehicles would the uh, town, be, town board be amenable to appropriating money um, back from the Highway Equipment Reserve Fund um, as well as the unassigned general fund balance as an amendment to the 2023 budget. Yep, and I, it w I was discussed with our uh, finance director that, that w we would, would be up fine to do that. So, uh, board, any questions or concerns on that? I'm fine with it. I'll be back to, and hopefully we'll be back up soon to um, uh, this is probably not the last time no. I'm going to be coming no. to you about yeah, these. We have a few um, more. We have a few more. Looking back, there, there is a. We're getting back. There, 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 there is uh, still an outstanding list of other vehicles yep. that mm. I'm working I'm, with. I'm the, on the right track. Yes. Yeah. Working with the dealership, uh, they have uh, yeah. requested to build slots from GM uh, for those oh, vehicles. Okay. We're waiting to see if G GM actually accepts those. If so, okay. great. Then I'll have information and I'll have numbers to bring back. Uh, if GM rejects okay. them, then yeah. no sense wasting all of our time. Oh, Bob, do you, all right. Who would like to make a motion? I'm good. Yeah, and this is so the motion you need is to, um, to basically take the funds. Right, I, I'll, I'll make funds. a motion that we authorize uh, make a resolution to be prepared for the authorization of the purchase of these vehicles and appropriate funding as an amendment to the 2023 budget. Mm -hmm. Very good. Bob, Sounds okay, seconding. Okay. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay, move by Lee, second it by Akadin. Um, Sue, can we have a roll call vote on that? Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akinden. Aye. All aye. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we're to informational items, and I believe we have an update here from Shadow Pines. Uh, update from Mr. Valentine. No, 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 oh, Rocco Pines. Oh, I'm sorry, Rocco Pines. Did I say Shadow I'm sorry, Rocco Pines. <laughs> it's always on your mind. No, yeah. I was, I know. <laughs> yeah, Rocco Pines update, please. Yes. Mr. Valentine. Actually, I'll defer to Mr. Tate on this unless oh. he's got questions. Be either or. Oh, okay. uh, so as part of the Rocco Pines um, subdivision development, there was a pump station that was required to collect all of the, the, the sanitary sewage um, generated from not only that neighborhood, but actually sized for the surrounding basin. Um, it then kind of makes its way heading westbound down Plank Road, uh, turns and heads north up Jackson into the Alden Glen neighborhood. Um, all of the infrastructure for that pump station has been installed, uh, working out the slight adjustment to the um, driveway for that pump station. However, we do still have the letter of credit for that to work with the developer. Um, the developer has sent in a, as you see on the screen and, and was shared on the drive, um, has submit a, mm -hmm. a letter requesting that the town accept dedication of that pump station. That was always the intent. It's more so a formality. Um, you know, if so, we would prepare a resolution, resolution. to accept dedication of the pump station. Um, it, we would, the, I also have a, once that resolution was passed, I also have a formal letter to um, send to the current owner, um, soon to be former, um, it, you know, acknowledging that the town would um, accept dedication, we would take over any maintenance responsibility. It would then therefore become a, a town owned and maintained uh, public sewer, which 
pieces, not only the health department, but also mm -hmm. the New York State DUC in the event that there's ever any issues that the town can actually step in and help resolve those before it causes any environmental concerns. Right. So to confirm, the sewer department and DPW have inspected uh, these pump stations. Correct. And this is a necessary step in order to facilitate the um, uh, the certificate of uh, occupancy, occupancy process for mm -hmm. the homeowners? Correct. Okay. Any issues? Then in order to facilitate the process for the no new homeowners mm -hmm. is part of this subdivision, I move that we authorize a resolution, resolution uh, to accept formal dedication and that this be um, added to a new legislative session um, yes. later this evening. Second. Moved by Lee, seconded by Cole. So can we have a roll call vote? Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ackenden. Aye. Oh, aye. Now we're to the end of the action items. I apologize. I was looking at something. Um, and now we're to informational. Thank you very much, Mr. Tate. Um, uh, to informational items 1225 Empire Boulevard, the special use site at plan application update. Oh. Carrie. Yeah, so I wanted to give it uh, just an update. There's no action required at this uh, time. <coughs> um, the application, obviously, we had the public hearing um, for the project. Um, the applicant sent their um, concept design to the New York State Department of Transportation for their review. They've since received a memo, and they're working with their um, their team or their uh, their engineer to address the New York State. DOT's comments. So I would just recommend that the the town board keep the uh, application tabled until such time that there's a revised plan for you to review. And Carrie, we should just uh, emphasize that that's the K2. Uh, the Forgive K2 me, yes, that was K, that, the K2 application to Perfect. utilize the former Agway um, mm -hmm. site um, located at 1225 Empire Boulevard. Um, and so at this time, we're awaiting um, updates to that plan that address the DOT's comments. Okay. Yep. No discussion, thank you very much on that. We have no held items um, before us tonight. We have um, no old business board, any new business? Seeing none, our next work session will be August 16th, right here. So I will adjourn this work session at 8.01 and uh, take about a five minute recess and we'll go to a special legislative meeting with one item, thank you.